When I was a kid, I admired black belts from any martial art. I saw in that belt a symbol of many years of hard training, sweat, pain and blood, and attained knowledge and experience. I thought anyone who earned a black belt in any style had to be a true badass. So starting in martial arts when I was younger, I was lucky enough to always train in dojos with very high standards and strict requirements. Uh, my teachers always had a very good background and experience and they have always been very faithful to tradition so their their methods were always very um, reliable older students would would grow to become very good martial artists so to reach my first black belt it took me six years and very hard work to improve my technique and develop myself mentally and physically so it was uh, it was a uh, an honor I earned. It was something I felt proud of. However, uh, nowadays it's more and more common to see black belts who have the technical level of a beginner, or black belts who have only been training for two years or so. There are a lot of very low level schools these days, uh, what we call McDojos. In those schools, getting a black belt is just a matter of paying fees. But in reality, a black belt is a symbol of hard training of attained knowledge and specializations in a discipline. It's supposed to be a hard-earned privilege, not a right. Many people think that everyone in a dojo should be treated special according to their limitations and weaknesses, lowering standards and requirements so that they fit their paradigm and that they don't feel left out. This is utterly ridiculous, and it results in a bunch of unqualified black belts running around and watered down martial arts. Later on, a lot of these turn out to be teachers and they teach everything wrong in turn, thus propagating more low-level martial artists. So, if a student of a martial art has some physical limitation or difficulties, the standards should not be lowered or modeled for them. The student should work on overcoming the limitations. It's that simple. If you lower the requirements or take it specially easy on them, you're doing them a disservice. They will not be overcoming their limitations and improving themselves. They will only be getting a false sense of power and security, perpetuating more of the same and not achieving anything. All you get from that kind of situation is the perpetuation of mediocrity. If it takes you twice as long than others to polish a technique or to learn something, then you have to train twice as long or twice as hard, or just quit. Therein lies the real martial development. The perseverance and focus to overcome your limitations. Either you quit, or you keep working with determination to achieve your goal. That is what the personal and spiritual development side of martial arts really is. Not whatever silly ideas people in McDojo's have, or some silly pink-colored stories that you get from some teachers when your level is low to make you feel better about yourself. If you're given a belt just so you don't feel bad or left out of the group, then all you're doing is creating a mediocre self. You're reinforcing your limitations or weaknesses that way. This applies to technique and to actual practical fighting skills as well. Everyone is afraid of being hurt. It's completely natural to be nervous and scared of a physical confrontation. But martial arts are about fighting. There is the technical side of martial arts, and then there is the actual application of what you have learned. A martial artist overcomes these fears, or learns how to control them and manage them through a physical confrontation. This happens through years of combat training of enduring pain and pushing yourself through stress, mentally, physically and emotionally. Thus, a black belt must be able to take a punch, as much as learn how to throw a punch. Nobody should be given a black belt if their combat skills are not developed enough for them to defend themselves or handle themselves in a physical altercation. Teaching martial arts, I have kept some students longer at certain belts to make sure they polish their skills properly. Most of the time, they would all respect my opinion and work hard to improve upon those points. Of course, there have been some who didn't like it because they wanted to be a black belt within a certain time frame 
or whatever, but those things were totally irrelevant to me. It is the teacher's responsibility to make sure the students develop the real required skills according to the level they are going for, no matter how long it takes. Also, the students are a reflection of the teacher, both in their skills and in their mental attitude. A bad martial artist reflects upon his teacher showing a bad instructor's work. Most belt gradings in martial arts have a certain time period between each other, say, from the first belt to the next belt, it takes about four months and so on and so forth. But this is just a guideline and not a rule set in stone. If a student doesn't improve and attain the required level in said time, then he should not do the belt test. Personally, I feel that a lot of these time measurements, like the preset time periods between belts, more often than not are too short. Usually people require more time to perfect themselves technically. But like I said, this is just a guideline and it's relative. Some people have the mental and physical technical skills to go faster than others and vice versa. So this is something the instructor has to also filter and reflect upon in each case. This situation is very clear with children. Many McDojos work with lots of children and they make them all pass belts together regardless of the skills developed individually because of many reasons. They don't want anyone to feel bad or left out or disappoint the parents, etc. etc. This is extremely negative for the kids and for martial arts as a whole. Martial arts schools are not meant to be daycare centers or social clubs meant to make kids happy. Okay, this everyone is a winner mentality is one of the main causes martial arts have been watered down so much in modern times. I've lived in Asia for eight years and I've visited Japan many, many times. I visited dojos in Japan for, I've trained in Japan also and I, I lived in Korea and trained in Korea. So, but my, my biggest impression regarding martial arts was when visiting Japan. In every dojo I went and I saw children training, they were treated same as an, an adult. Those children high, had the highest level of res, respect and discipline. It was something amazing to see and very different from what you see in the West. Those kids developed their skills properly, both physically and mentally. Their belts were not given to them. They were earned through hard work and focus. There was a real merit there. Not only did they treat their teachers with the highest level of respect, but also their training partners. In the West, the deal is pretty much just paying the monthly fee on time. This ensures the belt. The belt test itself is merely a formality. But a belt test is really supposed to be a real examination of what has been learned so far. It's in my opinion that if you do a belt test and you don't do well, you don't meet the standards, you should not pass the belt test. Okay, so why is it that Kyokushin, Daidojuku, Jujitsu, among other arts, are held in high regard and usually a black belt in those styles is very respected? It's because anyone who is a black belt in those styles is a real black belt. Anyone who knows anything about martial arts knows it's a bad idea to get in a fight with a black belt in Jujitsu or Kyokushin. To pass a belt in those styles, you have to train seriously and take things seriously. Belts are not just handed out. One of the styles I train in is Kyokushin. And to pass each belt test, it was more than one hour of doing physical and technical drills. Very demanding tests. After doing all the drills and physical tests and doing the kata, which was also done with a lot of power, you would finally get to the meat of the actual test. By that time, you were actually very exhausted. But, but that's when the real hard stuff came and the most important stuff in the test. It was the sparring. In Kyokushin, when you do a belt test, after doing all of those things, you have to spar. The highest you go in a belt, the more people you have to spar. But yes, you have to spar a bunch of opponents in a row without getting any rest between fights. They are full contact fights. And if you get knocked out, you don't pass the test. So basically, you have to survive to pass the test or knock everyone out. So the standard is for a black belt test, depending on the country and school, this can change. But it's an average of 20 guys in a row two-minute fights without resting. So imagine, that's why most Kyokushin fighters are tough as oak trees. They, there is true respect earned through that training. Although this is a subject for another talk, I want to say that a black belt should be a proficient fighter. Besides having developed their technique properly, 
A black belt, whether in a striking or grappling style, should be able to handle himself in a physical altercation, as I stated before. They should be able to fight better than an average person. This comes from receiving pain and stress throughout years of training, overcoming the fear and the pain, and strengthening their mind as well as their body. If you want to strengthen your body, just go do weight training. Martial arts strengthens the body with the mind, through pain. So, although I get irritated when I see unqualified teachers getting money for teaching rubbish, I try not to get upset about it. In reality, in the majority of cases, it's not actually their fault for having flawed knowledge and skills. It's not their fault that they're mediocre. It's the fault of their instructors before them who did not train them properly. I am not referring to guys who are clearly conmen, but to guys who really think they know what they're doing but have skills below what a real teacher should have. Just think of this, if you join medical school or any college career and you do not pass the exams, even if you studied really hard, you're not going to be given a medical degree as a merit of for just trying hard or to keep you from feeling bad. If you do not meet the requirements, you do not get the degree. If you fail the exams, you do not become a doctor, which is good because nobody wants to be treated by an unqualified doctor. In martial arts, this should be the same. The standards are there for some, for a reason. Now, there are, even in, in Asia these days, it depends on the style, of course, but for example, uh, living in Korea for many years, uh, a lot of tourists or foreigners working there who stay there for one or two years, they take on Taekwondo or Hapkido and, and are granted a black belt in one year or less. And they have a false sense of power and security. But actually, if you spar with one of those guys, they are absolutely rubbish in sparring, that they have not developed skills. But just to make money and to keep the tourists happy, a lot of teachers go along with this. That's, see, it's not only with children, it's with adults too. This is causing a great deal of uh, lowering of the quality of martial artists in the world. So if you're a teacher, if you're a martial arts instructor, you have to be strict. You have to not worry so much that they will leave because you don't want, you don't make them pass belts so fast. It should be about the experience, about the acquirement of knowledge and strength, not about the belts. And it's part of the instructor's responsibility to teach the students that. Many teachers just want to pay their rent or are too lazy or whatever reason. This short talk is not about McDojo's, which is something that this is could turn into. So I'm going to stop here. This was supposed to be a talk about how belts are handed away nowadays. But at some point I will talk about the McDojo's concept in general. Now remember, if you're, all you're after is a belt, just go and order one online. What matters is the skills and knowledge you acquire. The belt is a symbol and nothing more. In the case of martial arts, it's a fact that the journey is more important than the destination. Be well and keep training hard. Oh,